Podcast City Network. <laughs> And good evening, everyone, and you're listening to another episode of the Deathmatch Death Match Russell Podcast. And to the, tonight, my guest is indie pro wrestler Jeremy Rage, Mr. Wrestling Jeremy Rage, and we're going to be talking to him about a couple things that went down a couple weeks back on uh, the Everett Lee Show podcast and on... And see what's going on with Kentucky Zone Wrestling and much, much more. Tune in right now to the Deathmatch Russell Podcast. Let's talk wrestling. Wrestling Jeremy Rage, and how you doing tonight, my friend? I'm doing pretty good. Wrestling, how's it going, man? Pretty good. How's that weather? Is it uh that that uh, that that flood gone yet, or what? Yeah, it's starting to clear up a little bit there. It hasn't rained in the last like 24 hours, so it's pretty good right now. That is a plus, you know. Yeah, we had a lot of roads get tore out, and mm-hmm. a lot of people were stuck in their hollers and crap, but. I mean, it's starting to get better now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, boy, I'll tell you what, last week, I was just sitting on on the air, man, we just had a little little heat on the heat on the wrestling radio, heat on the wave, you know? Man, yeah. a little heat with you and uh, Mr. Uh, the Chris Rose, of course, you know. Of course. You know. But, hey, he's uh, he, he's one, he, he likes to talk a big game. Like mm-hmm. That. You know, I... I I mean, I I pretty well pride myself being the stick man around KZW. And yes. You have guys come in, you know, after me, and they try to they try to emulate what they see. You know, monkey see, monkey do. I guess they figure mm-hmm. if they get good at it, then they may go to the top, and it don't always work that way for everybody. You're right, one hundred percent on that. <clears throat> and uh, you know, I was just. <laughs> I just got off the, I was listening to, uh, what is it, 15 minutes ago, I was playing the little KT's, KZW uh, uh, clip with JJ, man, yeah. talking about a lot of cards coming up, and like a double ring match, that's like, like, like double rings, that's like bringing back like Starcade and all the old old school days of wrestling, you know? That, that's one of my favorite things about KZW is yeah. like, they go back to like the NWA days, styles yes. of wrestling. Right. The Double Danger 4, this will be my second one that I've been in. Mm-hmm. And last year's, I was within, you know, I was one of the last guys in there. Right. And got, ended up getting cheated by a guy that I trained back in the day, Crutch. Right. But, you know, I mean, you win some, you lose some. I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to it this year because mm-hmm. uh, I pretty well got this one in the bag. <laughs> yeah, take on whoever you got and, you know, put them down. Go for the pin. One, two, three. Call it a night. Mm. Call it a payday. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you know. Once I've got a little, uh, little something in the works myself right now. Anyway, I mm-hmm. when I came back there, I run into an old buddy of mine. He's an Anderson. 
He's from the Anderson family. Okay. Me and him, we decided we would uh, team up and try to take those world tag team titles at KZW because, I mean, they're just, the tag team division is it's just not up to par in my standards. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I hold myself pretty high standard, and I know Anderson does too, so mm-hmm. we figured we'd team up and take those world tag team titles from the undead outlaws, as they like to call themselves. Hmm. Right. And see, uh, you know. How long they've they, they've been there? I'm sure for quite a lot while, you know. I, hey, they've had them for a few months, but I mean, they're they've had them long enough. Mm. They they're they're starting to downgrade the titles instead of actually bring them up. Mm. Ah, so yeah, so JJ needs to switch the moves. <laughs> get to the yeah. get to the uh, you know the zing of the we know we know all the terms of the wrestling. You know we know how it is. Oh yeah, you know. But yeah, just uh, you know, uh, I'm looking. For, man, I wish I was like, I wish I was closer to go all the time. You know? Yeah. Which uh, I mean, they're they're starting to get like uh, like I think they're going to get a YouTube channel here pretty soon. Mm-hmm. And uh, where they've got new sponsors and things like that, and now they're starting to get a little more notoriety. So like, I know. people will be able to see a whole lot more of the product now. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which I think is, you know, that's a great thing because I mean, the more the the more eyes you have on the product, and the more people see it, the mm-hmm. bigger it's going to get. Yeah, and I'm seeing my friends. I'm seeing my friends take part in it. Uh, Robin and uh, Mr. Everett. So they're uh, launching their ways too. You know, with oh, it, yeah. and they're big. They're the big help to it, and I am too, of course. You know, so absolutely. You know, getting you guys on here as a podcast, and you know, when I when I get a chance, and I go. Summertime's coming, you know. I'm gonna like summertime's coming. Tried to travel. I've been to Kentucky. Oh. I've been to Kentucky. Oh yeah, I, I've been I, mean, to, I love it here. Uh, I mean, tell. I got friends I can stay with. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, hey. Oh yeah. I mean, how far far as that is, brother? I got a, I got five rooms in this house, man. We could set a podcast up. And <laughs> stay right here. You drink some beers. That's it. Right. Damn that. That's it. You know. <laughs> But no, I've I've actually stayed I've actually stayed a lot of friends' houses. So IWA Mid South, they've had I've had guys at my house, and, and you know it's crazy. It's great, you know. Oh yeah. You can you could really have a conversation with a lot of you know. <laughs> you learn a lot. <laughs> you know. Oh God, I mean, you'd be surprised that like people like at work and things like that when they find out that you're a wrestler and stuff like. Yeah. The questions that they ask and their concept of it is totally different than what it actually is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But after they, you know, after you kind of smarten them up a little bit, but not too much, you know, because I mean you have TK fade, but yes, I mean, yes, when you that's smarten it. them up a little bit too, you know, they're like, well, it ain't that bad. No, no. I mean, you know what? I still talk to wrestler friends that still do it, and they're still having, you know, they're working both jobs, and <laughs> they're doing pretty good with themselves, you know? Mm. Well, now, I mean, like, I've been at this for 16 years now, mm-hmm. and I grew up in it. My uncle was a wrestler. Yeah. And I grew up in the locker room watching the older guys and stuff, and, like, some of those guys well, I've actually got to work with. What was your dad's, what was his name in the ring? His name in the ring was Clint Dorsey. Mm. And his shoot name was Archie Brandstutter. He passed away last year. Yeah, yeah. But uh, him and Jim White is the two guys that trained me and broke me into the business. Mm-hmm. And Jim White, he passed away some years ago. Right. He was uh, actually Jerry Lawler's tag team partner back in the day. Mm-hmm. uh, Good old Jerry Lawler. Yeah, man. uh, I've I've met him a handful of times. Like him and Ricky Morton, they always have some of the funniest stories. Mm -hmm. Ricky Morton, I just met him not long ago again. Yeah. And he he tells the same story every time you meet him. Mm -hmm. But uh, I love it. I wouldn't change my job for nothing. Absolutely, absolutely, because you never know who's going to come in the door, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, That's... like, I've met, like, Jake the Snake Roberts, and I mean, I've met a handful of the guys Sp- that I grew up watching, speaking, like, loving in the business. Speaking of Jake the Snake Roberts, I just recently had my birthday, right, on February 14th, Valentine's weekend, right? So yeah. I so I uh, call up the, lo- well, the radio station, local radio stations, uh, you know, doing those contests, call in and get tickets, right? Well, yeah. Two days after my birthday, I called up, and I was caller number nine, and I actually won tickets for Jake the Snake's 
comedy tour that's going to happen in April. So I cannot wait. Awesome. I'm going to take my old man to that. We're going to have fun, you know. That's going to be badass. It is. It is. I mean, hey, that's a what a forty dollar ticket. Come on, you know. For yeah, I you mean, know, you, just, you win, you win ticket. I mean, anything free is yes, good. Though. Yeah, mean, yeah. But you know what? Also, now now, now I'm like, oh, and they're giving tickets away for the WrestleMania or the Hogan. Hogan and Flair in Atlantic City, and then next day's wrestling. You know, I'm like, ha, that's too much, though. You know, right? That's that's like a kid's wet dream. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but that's gonna be really cool. But I just actually, I'm looking for like April, like WrestleMania weekend. I'm not doing any. I'm not going to any of the big stuff. You know, I'm gonna stay local. You know, and I, and it's the same place. Well, actually, they're gonna have an, like a like an '80s wrestling convention, and I'm like, this is. This is gonna be awesome. I'm take my dad or my neck, my neighbors with my neighbor with me, go see some old wrestlers, you know, some uh, the Wild Samoans, you know, right. and see how they're doing. Like, I mean, they wrestled in my hometown when I was a young kid, you know, like. Uh, awesome and sake of man, like, yeah, you don't mess with Samoans, like, no, I mean that's just like a wall, like in wrestling, you do not mess with a Samoan. No, no. And I remember when I saw them, they actually were, and Bru Bruiser Brody was, was there at the time, so, you know, I was lucky enough to see Bruiser, you know. Bruiser Brody, he was a bad, he Oh, was a bad he was dude. the man, I know, I know, I have, I, have, I yet still have to go, I gotta buy that DVD and check that out, that, that he just put out, that documentary, it's supposed to be really good. Yeah. Now, him and Stan Hansen, I was always a big mark for Stan Hansen, because I mean, mm -hmm. You can't, I mean, you can't fake being that tough. Like, Stan Hansen was, like, one of the baddest dudes I ever watched growing up. Like, I, I mean, mm -hmm. he popped Vader's eye out, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would wrestle with the chew in, you know. And, like, I took a lot of his things and, and implemented it into my own, mm -hmm. you know, the way I work now. Yeah. That's great. I've done the I've done the whole chew bit and stuff, which I ain't as tough as Stan Hansen, you know. I'm not no. putting myself over it in that <laughs> yeah, aspect. Yeah. But, I mean, I've been sick quite a few times trying to chew and wrestle at the same time. It doesn't work for me that much. No, like a Murdoch, right? <laughs> yeah, it was it was bad, but I mean, I got through it. Oh, there was another guy who was pretty good, Murdoch. You know, back in the yeah, man. Gosh, which, uh, him and him and Dirty Dick Murdoch. I mean, yeah. They look almost identical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't even hear these names no more. You really don't see it, you know? Like the, you, you don't. And, I mean, that's that's one of the things, like, I like doing is, yeah. like, I do different, I just do different gimmicks every time I come out. Like, I mean, I'm not a gimmick per se, you mm -hmm. know, like a, like a hatter or, or, or anybody like that, but, like, I dress up differently every time I come out. Like, I'll do Venom once. I've done Punisher. Uh, mm -hmm. I've done a zombie hunter thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just take things that I enjoy yeah. in my real life and just put it into my character. Yeah, you got it. Because it gets, yeah, because you have to keep, you know, boosting it and just for the hype and stuff, you know? People don't know. Yeah, I mean, you, as long as you keep it, I think, as long as you keep it fresh and mm -hmm. you just do new stuff, like, it's always going to draw attention. Mm-hmm. And in this day and time, in the modern day and time now, you have to find new ways to keep up with some of these younger cats because some of these guys, it's athletic, like, yeah, it's hard to keep up. Yeah, look at, I mean, what are you thinking of new stuff now? You're looking at, you probably catch your eye on it and be like, wow, this stuff's pretty awesome, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I sit and I've watched some of these younger guys, but I mean, I've tried to, I've tried to mentor a few of them and just tell them, you know, I mean, because if you think about it, really, mm -hmm. we tell stories yep. with our, you know, we use our bodies to tell stories. And yep. I mean, it's a physical job. It is. And you can do 20 minutes of flippy floppies and big yeah. high spots, but you're not telling the story. You can do some of the coolest shit in the world and you're still going to get an applaud for it mm -hmm. because it was a, you know, it was an awesome looking deal and, you know, not many normal people can do that sort of thing. But if you get in there and you tell a story with a guy, mm -hmm. You don't have to do any of that stuff. No. And no. you'll have people sitting on the edges of their seats, and that's kind of that's the kind of work that I enjoy doing. Yeah, because cause you know what? You, you watch, you watch the, what do you watch, WWE, and they're, how long are they doing those promos? Come on, really? Yeah, like, they have, like, 15, 20-minute promos and stuff, and 
back when I was growing up, like Cornette told me once, yeah. you know, when I was up at Ring of Honor, we took a promo class there, and he's like, yeah. keep it short and sweet and get the point across, it's like a minute 50 is great. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah. But you got guys now who's cutting like 15, 20 minute promos, and they're not really saying anything. No, no, they're just, they just want to be, you know, shit. John Cena, John Cena, yeah, John, you know, come on. Over or I know. A friggin' CD over or something. You know? Then they get, yeah. Then uh, then then Vince McMahon goes, "Hey, I'm going to use you for a movie, okay?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, uh, which he's got it now to where pretty much he can just take anybody and throw them in a movie. And some of these guys does really good, and then some of these guys is just horrible. I know. Boy. Yeah, I know. I know. Wow, just, like some of the movies that they've put out, like I. Yeah. No wonder they went straight to DVD, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You don't even see it on their market, right? You don't even see it. It's a DVD movie. Heck, it's not even on their network, you know? Right. <laughs> Why would they even... I don't know. Weird. Vince has too much up his ass. I don't know. It's these days. Well, but, I mean, uh, hopefully with Bruce Pritchard going back to the WWE uh -huh. and, like, getting, like, writing, like, creative control and stuff over uh -huh. some of that stuff, like... Hopefully they're going to start bringing back some actually decent wrestling. And he's act I mean. and that guy's actually going to be at the uh, convention too. So I'm actually going to look. I cannot wait to talk to him and get a couple pointers for my podcast. You know, it's going to be good. absolutely. I mean, he's he's one of the best black uh -huh. minds in the business. He's on his own I mean, podcast. Come on, shit. Yeah, something to wrestle with. I mean, my God, if if like Paul Heyman for God's sakes, a man could get a hold of him mm -hmm. and just like pick his brain for a day, mm -hmm. it's I'm telling what. What we would learn. There's so many great podcasts. Have you ever checked out some of these podcasts? They're pretty good, actually. They're fun to listen to. Like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Like, blows oh, God. you. That's, that, that's my dude right there, Steve Austin. That's my hero. Yeah. So, he's, yeah, I, I've watched a lot he's, of his stuff. He's had a, couple, he's had a couple of my local friends on there. You know? like, And it's really cool just to see their point of view, you know, wrestling. You know? Like he actually, oh, yeah. he actually had Mon, Madman Pond, uh, Sick Nick Mondo from CZW, you know, and it, that's great. Mondo, brother, shout out to Mondo. He, yeah, he's, he's, he's a tough dude, man. He is a tough dude. He's he's acting though. He does a lot of acting nowadays. He's done with the wrestling, you know. Yeah, does does a lot of acting and stuff. So he's you know he keeps himself busy. That's great. That's, I mean, I, I mean that's the name of the game because I mean technically we all want. So, well, not yeah. all of us, because you do have the occasional friggin' weekend warrior out there, you know, that's just in it to look good and, you know, show out in front of their girlfriend or mm -hmm. size up their dicks with each other, but yeah. Yeah. I'm the type of guy, like, I want to make it in this business. Like, I'm I'm not doing this just on the weekends, and I'm not doing this just to play a wrestler. Like, I want to take my career to, like, TNA, Ring of Honor again, you know, like, I want, I actually want to make a living doing what I love to do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You got some, you got some of these cats that they, they could care less. They're happy where they're at. You know, they're content. Mm-hmm. They are. They are. But you know what? Business is business. Rest, you know, it's an industry. Oh, yeah. And it like, grows. As long as they get their 20 bones and their hot dog and a handshake, they're happy. Like, they're content. Yeah. They don't care if they go anywhere. And, and that's, that's crazy to me, like. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't understand that train of thought. But you don't want to be like the WWE twenty four seven. You know, you don't want to be on. Right. The, you I don't mean, want that I lifestyle. I don't want to work a nine to five job and then just rest on the weekends. Like you know, like I want my nine to five job to be wrestling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Speaking of uh, Everett Lee, he has actually on a podcast right now with somebody else on Twitch. Cool. Shout out to Everett Lee and his guest tonight. <laughs> Yeah, big shout out to Everett Lee Show. What's going on, boys? Yeah, he's uh, doing his thing, podcast live. I should be watching that, but you know what? We'll do a Facebook Live one day. I like I like doing that fun. That's fun, you know. Man, I I, I kind of got known last year. Yeah, like twenty seventeen and twenty eighteen. That's kind of what I got known for. Is I was doing these shoot promos. Yeah, because I just I'd had enough of like people passing over me and just yeah. like these younger guys and these rookies who doesn't really pay dues and who doesn't earn any damn thing, mm -hmm. getting all these title shots and getting all this glorification. Mm -hmm. and I just got pissed off about it one day, and I started doing the Facebook Live stuff and, and yeah, yeah. started doing, like, these live shoot promos and got right. known for it. Yeah, and you got, hey, I'll tell you what, you know what, we, 
we got a lot of good reviews from that. You know that. That was great. That was. Oh yeah, like that, I think that, there were some people who was getting behind me, even though you know, good or bad. Like you, you always have fans. Uh huh. Uh huh. And I hope, I know, hopefully, JJ makes it a match for you guys soon. You know, that's probably coming, right? Hopefully. I hope it is because I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make sure I say something to him. I'll tell him. <laughs> we, uh, when, when me and JJ got together and we signed the deal, yeah, he had already heard about the podcast before I even made it into Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. But he had already had a match signed for Chris Rose, and they pretty much kept us away from each other. They kept me in my own separate little locker room because yeah, yeah. they pretty much knew if they didn't keep an eye on me, I was going to go out there and I was going to drill his ass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he just won a title again, didn't he, this past week, right? He, he retained his yeah. United States Championship, but he's only holding that thing until I get done doing my thing. When I get my when I get my goals back on track, I'm coming for that title. Mm -hmm. Hell, I may even go for the world title. It just depends on who's holding it at the time, whether I like them good enough or not. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could be Everett Lee. You don't know. No I'm kidding. Hey, if it's, I mean, if it's Everett Lee, I'm sorry, Everett, brother. Sorry, Everett or Robin, right? Or Robin. I'm taking that strap. You know I mean? That's, yeah. that's the name of the game is to beat the top guy. And if you don't want to beat the top guy, then what the hell are we doing here, you know? Yeah. Yeah, maybe you might have to get him as a manager or something, you know? I know that oh, they're... Yeah. I know they're working on some stuff, so, you know, I'm not going to say it, you know, we know it. Yeah. We got to keep... K KZW, man, they've got a lot of big things coming, like the 2019 is their year. It's yeah, their and maybe... Year. Like, they have a lot of things in the works. I think I, I might... wait for it. I think I might have to get my my uh, foot in the door there, too, somehow, you know? It'll happen. It'll happen, you know? Oh, yeah, brother, hey, any time, like I said, just come down, man, to Kentucky and come down to K... You know, come I know. KZW. Who knows? Jeremy Rage might train you one day. You know, who you can't ever tell. No, no, no. As a fan of wrestling and podcaster, <laughs> take yeah. it to the mat. No, no, uh, I couldn't hey, do it. Wrestling podcaster turned pro wrestler. I mean, that's that's a hell of a gimmick right there. Brother. It is. It is. It is. I mean, you've got the platform to get yourself over like Rover, so I mean. Yeah, give me a thumbtack. Give me a bat, you know? <laughs> <laughs> give me a little wire. I'll play. I'm not scared. Brother, the, the thumb the thumbtack gimmick, I, I've, I've done that before. Oh, my God. There, it's, it's, hey, I'll tell you what, man, it's, it's, you know, on, on the East Coast, it's really, <laughs> they pile on the thumbtacks now. Like, oh, yeah, like, like I, it's, DJ had up CZW, I saw him do a match one time where he uses, he didn't even, like, it was just plate glass, like, mm -hmm. just glass, like, oh, yeah. sticking the door or something, oh, my God, like, those are some hardcore dudes. Yes, they, they are. They really are. Yes, they are, and I just got you know. I, you know, I'm sure you saw my picture. I recently just met uh, June from Japan, June Kasai. That was all. Yeah. That was awesome to meet a legend. You know, a real true wrestler. You know, deathmatch. Oh my god, man! I couldn't imagine. Like I've always wanted to meet like Jushin Thunder Liger. Uh -huh. Like he was always one of the ones that stuck out mostly in my mind growing up. Yeah. When they would bring those guys in on like WCW and stuff from Japan and things, uh -huh. and I, I've, I've seen him on the indie circuit. Mm -hmm. I've never got to work a show with him, but I've always like that's that's one of my idols that I would love to meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so many guys now. It's a lot of now. It's a lot of the Lucha Underground guys, you know. Yeah, They're, they, Which they they lost a couple of good guys themselves to like WWE and things like that. And like mm -hmm. uh, AEW now has a couple what, of. What do you them, think? Like, what do you what do you think of that thing? What do you think of that? That's like hot fire right there, you know. I, AEW man is is it's, blowed up like it is blowing up, and I like yeah. that, I mean they're right because fans they want a variety. I mean that's kind of like the Indies. I mean it they, is. They, they, that's the reason they go to these shows. They want to see something different than what they watch on TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, WWE has a good product, but if AEW can offer something, you know, an alternative to mm -hmm. what they're watching, I mean, who knows? Yeah, money's... Maybe mo we'll see a AEW, WWE uh, invasion one day, you know, or, or <laughs> yeah. Monday, Monday Night War kind of thing or something, you know? Yeah, Elimination Chamber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. My friend told me about 
told me about the Elimination Chamber. He's like, what if it comes around? I, you know, that's one pay-per-view I wouldn't mind going to. <laughs> that's Hell cool, no. That's a cool I would definitely buy a ticket to it. That's a cool structure, you know? <laughs> Just yeah. A, I mean, shit. But, I mean, you've got three guys in Cody and the Young Bucks who pretty much wrestling pretty much just scoffed at him. Yep. His, and, well, and told him you know, pretty much never be nothing. And, 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 boom. and you think about it, Cody, yeah, his dad, you know, he influenced him. You know, big, you know, got into his head a lot, you know, told him. Teach, taught him probably stuff that we didn't even know, you know. Oh, God, I would love to have the knowledge that Cody and his dad and, and the Rhodes family has, like, could you imagine? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's unreal. Yeah, like, but, I mean, but Cody, Rose, Big you know, Flair, just, matches. just think, but Ring of Honor helped a lot of this, too, you know? A lot of, oh, lot God, of, yeah. The owner helped out big time, you know? Shout out to Kerry for that. I mean, when I was at Ring of Honor, like, they had Kevin Steen, which is Kevin Owens now, and they had Tyler Black, and mm -hmm. they had uh, Brian Danielson. They had Nigel McGinnis was their world champion at the time. Nigel McGinnis is an unsung hero in this business because, I mean, like, mm -hmm. some of the work that he does is, like, unreal. And mm -hmm. to be trained in Dayton, Ohio by Les Thatcher, yeah. I mean, you know, that, Les Thatcher is another one of the greats that people, you know, not many people realize. But and a lot, think about it, a lot of guys also got trained with Ricky the Dragon, too, you know? Oh, God. Yeah. That's, that's one of the best hands in the business. That's the biggest baby face in the business. Like, you can't you can't see him no other way. I mean, he was, just, he was always a baby face. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he's the proverbial good guy. Yeah, but a lot of knowledge, you know? And that's well, good. A lot of knowledge. A lot of knowledge. He's bringing a lot of kids up into the world that did, you know, the right way and not the, that, the wrong way of wrestling, right. and, you know. And you look now, I mean, come on, he trained CM Punk, come on, you know. Well, I mean, that's like we were talking yeah. about earlier. You have these guys who would, like back when I was coming up and stuff, when, when Jim and my uncle broke me in, like for a whole, like for a year, and year, two years at a time, we were... Jesus Christ, we were getting our asses handed to us. And mm -hmm. it, it made you respect the business more. And you paid dues. You swept floors. You worked security. You rep mm -hmm. matches. You, you know, you worked different jobs at those shows to earn your way into that ring. Mm -hmm. And and you learned how to bump on the floor before you got in that ring and bumped. And now you've got these guys who's being trained by guys who was trained by this person. Mm -hmm. And they've only got a couple of years in the business training guys, and they're flooding the business with these half-assed wrestlers who, like I said, they become weekend warriors because they think they're so good, and then they turn out that they suck. Mm -hmm. And when you break the news to them and tell them that they suck, they want to get an attitude about it. Yep. Yeah, I know that. I know that feeling. Yeah. See that all the time in wrestling. I mean, that's... Like, when I train guys, I train guys the old school way. I train guys the way I was brought up. Mm -hmm. And that's why that's why you got guys like Crutch and guys like Repic, the two guys that I trained that graduated from. They were the first two graduates from a class that I had. And those two guys, I mean, look where they are now. They've been world champ. You know, one's been world champions. Mm -hmm. The other one's had numerous titles and mm -hmm. has traveled, you know, like, numerous companies like we just me and crutch matter of fact we i mean mm -hmm. we just had a knockdown drag out feud at the wwa and uh mm -hmm. like the owensboro area in yeah western kentucky yeah i mean those those are two of the toughest dudes in kentucky right now and i mean mm -hmm. i mean you know i'm not bragging on myself or nothing but i mean there's a difference in when you train guys a certain old school way and mm -hmm. then when you train guys just you know, top rope day or just bump day, you know, you've got to learn them more than just taking a bump. I mean, there's more to the business than that. There's psychology. I mean, there's so much mm -hmm. knowledge to be passed into this business before you actually consider yourself a wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a fan. You got to be, you got to, got to be, you know, <laughs> got to be right well, on yeah. top of things, you know? I mean, well, yeah, I mean, I, really know. the way I always say it is you have workers and then you have wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Wrestlers are the ones that you see that they love the business, they study the business, they they want everything, you know, they want to learn every aspect of the business. They want to take their careers and go to the next level in the business. A worker is just one of those guys who just shows up on Saturday and is like, hey, man, give my 20 bones and my hot dog handshake, I'll go out here and, you know, 
think that I'm having a five star match when I'm having a you know half a star match. Right, absolutely, absolutely. And now it's like the WrestleMania weekend's coming. You know, it's like here we go. <laughs> you know. Oh God. <coughs> I mean, you you'll have WrestleMania weekend, and I guarantee you, if you go to that, yeah, ninety nine percent of the guys you'll see there will be like ex workers or workers that's trying to break into the business. They're just marks for themselves and just want to be, you know, part of that weekend. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, ticket sellers. You know, just the local, a lot of the local shows happening, and just everything. I mean, I would love it myself. I went to uh, WrestleMania when Taker lost to Lesnar, mm -hmm. and that was my first WrestleMania, and that was my last. Like, I swore I would never go back because my entire childhood, Yeah. I remember when Taker first come in, you know. I mean, he was there just a couple months, maybe maybe a year, and won the world title from Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. And the guy had an undefeated streak that nobody could touch. Yeah. And then they brought in Lesnar. <laughs> Yeah. And then after he did it, then Roman Reigns did it. I mean, now there's really nothing, mm -hmm. there's nothing special anymore, you know, about WrestleMania. Like, some people, like me, for instance, I would only want to watch WrestleMania just to see Taker defend the streak. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely, because he's had it for how long? Jeez. Oh, my God. Like, 21 and, he's 21 and 2 now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Did but, I mean, for 21 years, nobody could touch him. No. At and WrestleMania, he was on another level. And now you see who's, who came back. You yeah. Uh, Batista. I'm like, wow. Batista come back, yeah, Monday night. What a hurt. See, I, I don't, I, I haven't watched it. I, I, in a long time. No, I haven't. Either. I don't watch it. All. I read. I'm, I'm a news reader. You know, I used to uh -huh. watch it. I can't. You know, I can't watch it. I could watch it, but it's like, all right, here. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, because I mean, they're pretty much they're just feeding you the same old stuff over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And I mean, now that they brought Batista in and he did the job on Ric Flair like that, like I'm saying that now, I, you know, I'd say Mr. Pritchard's probably had his hand in it. And he's bringing back these top guys to like mm -hmm. pump the ratings back up and build wrestling back up to where it's actually watchable. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because Batista was one of those guys that did it, you know. <laughs> oh God, yeah. I mean, him and Taker themselves had yeah. some. Great matches, him and Triple H's feud they had when he uh, left Evolution. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean Batista. You know, some people don't like him, some people do. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I'm a fan of Batista's because I mean, I know he's awesome. Guy, he's, gotta respect him. I yeah. mean, you know, and he's made movies and he's also in. A, you know, he does good jobs. You know, come on. Oh God, yeah. And he's I been mean, on TV he, shows and this and that. Come on, right? Like we don't. Yeah, he's. A, he, I mean, he's a, he's one of the big players in the business. I mean, you can't deny the guy that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he still looks good. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Like he, I, I, I think they, those guys has found like the 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 youth fountain, and they they, they <laughs> drunk out of it because you you see those guys and they don't they haven't changed their looks much from back in the day when I was a kid. No, no, or me too. You know, just seeing their faces, you're like, wow. <laughs> you know, I mean, a, my my big wet dream would be you know because I met Rick Flair once. But mm -hmm. my biggest wet dream would be to actually get in the ring and have Ric Flair like put the figure four on me. <laughs> that's that's the end all be all for me is Ric Flair. <laughs> yeah, the nature boy, the nature boy Ric Flair man. He's just had his birthday, didn't he? <laughs> I know it's seventy years old and still, years. Still, still cutting the rug. Like he does. Still cutting rug and still has a rap album out. You know, come on. Oh, oh yeah, I mean God. <laughs> It's, it's, it just amazes me how some of these guys like stay involved in the business. Like some of the best ones, you you think you know they'll last forever, and then you don't never hardly see them there anymore. Like Stone, going back to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mm -hmm. Back when I was like in middle school and high school, growing up watching the Attitude Era, oh my God, there was nobody better. There nobody. wasn't. I know. Cause he was just the... And now you don't ever hardly see him anymore. And like if they was to bring him back. Oh my God! Could you imagine what ratings they would have that day? Yeah, yeah. And I just saw. I just was reading up, and they just brought back Matt Hardy again. That's, they're bringing these guys in again. Surprise! Yeah. Like I kind of figured that when Matt Hardy took his time off, yeah. I kind of figured he was just taking time off to heal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know he's healing. He has his family. You know, his kids are beautiful. You know, 
cute kids. Oh, absolutely. See their pictures on Instagram all the time or Facebook, Twitter, you know? Yeah. He he's something else, but now the Hardy Boys, they were they were two more guys like they're they're deserving of being top guys right now because I mean mm-hmm. the work that they did with Edge and Christian and guys like in the Dudley Boys. Oh, absolutely. In just just think about it. You know how Dudley Boys were the innovators of tables. You know, come on. I mean, and then the Hardy Jesus. the Hardy Boys were the latter guys, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, like they, they, they stuck those elements together, and they made they just made magic. And, and then, I mean, you, then you look fast forward to like the, the the like the structures that they made. Wow, it's like blew I mean, your mind yeah, out. Like, for, for my someone God, this. some of that stuff looked it looked a little rickety. I ain't gonna lie. Like you yeah. get nervous watching it. You're like, oh. But then TNA did that too. Don't forget, they have always they were like the you know after like think about it. They got you know after the monsters ball matches like what the chain oh, on God, chain yeah. on chain on the wall. You know and then they had the ladders and you know the X the, division. the X division match yes. that really caught my attention that I've been involved in a couple of times at different promote at a different promotion than KGW was uh, mm-hmm. where they hung the X cables yeah. for the Ultimate X match mm-hmm. and. That is a crazy match, speaking from experience of being in one, because, like, mm. there's so many guys that have so many innovative ways of doing things or getting you off those cables or getting to the championship. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. 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 Just to climb a little thin wire, you know? Come on. Yeah. I mean, pretty much, it's it's a, it's another set of ropes that yeah. you have to, you know, try to make your way across to get to the goal. And, I mean, there's five other guys that's trying to jerk your ass down and, Mm-hmm. You know that's a long way down. Fifteen feet might not be too high to some no. people, but when you when you fall flat, you know, and you ain't got your feet under you or something, and you hit from fifteen feet in the air to your flat of your back, that I mean, you can't fake gravity. No, that you hurt. cannot. You cannot. They've they've showed that. I've seen it, a couple things like that. It's like nope. <laughs> you know. Yeah, like people always hollering. You know, like wrestling's fake or that's fake or this is fake. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing I'll tell them, I'll tell everybody, I've told everybody else, if you think it's so fake, get your ass in there and see how fake it really is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've, I've had I've had 19 broke bones from the business. And I mean, like I said, you can't fake gravity. I don't care who you are or how good you may be. Mm-hmm. You're you ever, not faking gravity. When you fall, you're gone. Have you ever had concussion? I've had several. As I just had one a couple weeks back. I took a uh, yeah. Alabama slam and... The next thing I know, I was waking up to a guy flipping over top of me, and I just so happened to get out of the way in time. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah I've, I mean, I've had I've several. Had, I've, had, I've had a couple of friends that have had that. That's scary. That's really scary. It's, you don't. Oh know. God, yeah, because you for days mm-hmm. you 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 don't feel good for days, and it's it's almost like a nausea. One thing. of the guys actually he's out of he's out of wrestling. You know, he stopped wrestling. You know. He's, oh yeah, it's it's. I mean, some people it's taken their career from them. It's caused them to have like epilepsy seizures mm-hmm. and things of that nature. I mean, that that's a scary situation. It really is. It is. It is. You know, and I was just reading, and one of my friends actually, it was just posted on the internet, and I should share you. That, I'll share that with you later. Uh, one of my friends was HIV. Uh, HIV. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean. You're around, you're around people mm-hmm. in the business, and like if you go to like places like Tennessee, like they're a little more strict on Kentucky mm-hmm. than what they are in like Tennessee and other places like that. But like mm-hmm. the blood situation down here is not really a big issue anymore because yeah. they pretty much cut it out now. Mm-hmm. But like when you go to Tennessee and stuff like that, like yeah, you never know. Like mm-hmm. when you get involved in a match like that, you never know about people because some people could just be ashamed and just not say something, and then you just somebody's life for no reason like not like look at Nigel McGinnis mm-hmm. one of the best wrestlers in the world you know a ring of honor world champion for years mm-hmm. was around blood like that and ended up contracting hepatitis and I mean yeah. you know it's it's a sad situation yeah you know but you still want to go back in the ring and do some blood matches so you know oh yeah but I mean I've seen, like, I was watching on Facebook here a while back, and mm-hmm. it might be even the same guy, you know. He was a younger dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, never never had a problem in the business, and then contracted HIV just from a match. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's it's pretty much tough. Oh, you, pr- oh you probably saw the story. It's probably Adam Bueller. Yeah, yeah, yes. that guy, yeah. Yes, he's a great friend, good guy, really nice down-to-earth person. 
Like, I mean, that, that's, uh, I mean, that's, I mean, you know, God love him. Because, yep. I mean, you can tell he loves the business. He does. And for, you know, something like that to take him out of the business before his time, I mean, you, you know, it tears you up. It you does. don't know what's to do. But he's strong and he, you know, tells the story and, you know, must move on, you know? He's not scared. Oh, yeah, I he mean, wants... thank God that he's, you know, I mean, he's a hell of a man to share, so, you know, share a story like that. I mean, that's great. Because most guys don't, you know, that. They don't. Oh, yeah, don't... like I said, you got some of these guys who's just, you know, they, they won't say nothing about it and then they just take a chance on it. Like, that's not safe to do. I mean, mm. We try to be as safe as possible in this you business. You have to. I mean, you have you know, to be. We tell stories and stuff, but I mean, my God, man, when mm. when you've got a a disease like that, or you have actually something wrong with you, you know, speak up. Don't be prideful mm. and, mm -hmm. and ashamed. I mean, go to go to the head person and talk to somebody. You know. Mm. Yeah, go go to the you know go to the people and talk to them. Explain the situation. I mean, there's ways of getting around it other than. Mm. You know, I mean, there's other positions in the business than in ring work. Like me, I fully expect to win if I retire from in ring. Mm. You know, I I probably end up like Sean Schultz, a good friend of mine. You know, I probably end up being a referee or, or yeah. something. You know, like I I can't just walk away from the business. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. A lot of guys walk away, but they still wrestle. It's amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, like I mean, like Ric Flair. Honestly, if he could, I guarantee you, he would be in that ring right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Be giving you, you that. You have guys who's just taken out of the business way too young, like Owen Hart. I mean, he, you know, that accident there happened, and that was I that know. took one of the best wrestlers ever in the world. You know, that's probably the only time I ever saw. Uh, actually, you know, when I, when I was at when I was a young, you know, at WrestleMania Five when I was a kid, you know, I got to see him yeah. as a, I just got to see him as a blue blue blazer. You know, only I time. Mean, that, only time to that was horrible, especially watching it live. I mean, when, I, I yeah. mean, I wasn't there. No, I wasn't either. I, mean, I'm I just remember saying. seeing the pay per view and yeah. how they cut the like they cut the the pay per view off for a few minutes, and when it came back on, you know something was wrong because everybody was just different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now you know, legacy is still moving on. Family's still moving on strong. You know, uh, oh god, yeah. His his brother, you know, you know his brother Owen. I mean, t uh, Brett. Brett. Brett still. Yeah, that was that was one of the best accomplishments of my career is <clears throat> getting to meet Brett Hart. Mm -hmm. I got his autograph hanging on the wall. He signed a pair of my wrestling boots that I no longer use just because he signed them, so I retired them and put them in the case. <laughs> there you go. I'll be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Hall of Famer signed my boots. I know. I mean, you know, that's that's like, I don't know, that's like getting a blessing from God or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like I met, An you know, I met I met Anvil, you know? He's a great guy. Talk about another guy who had a business and then died. Look at all these people that died, man. It's like, really, you know? I don't know it, man. Like, yeah, we, we've had a few in the Indies that's passed away. And yeah. Like, Just, what was it, last year we had like six go, like, Mm -hmm. We had three back to back, like Dusty Piper, and mm -hmm. I mean, we had a bunch go like real quick. And then Mr. Mean Gene, and then oh my God, yeah, that was horrible. That was was one of the greatest. Because I mean, you know, JJ JJ knows Mean Gene, you know. Oh uh, yeah. Personally. And I mean, uh, that was that was a hard day to office to deal with right there because I mean, you could just tell that JJ wasn't mm -hmm. he wasn't normal average JJ. No, 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 no. Yeah, working with him, you know, listen. Oh, I, I mean, uh, Mr. McGuire, he's, he's, he's a handful of times to work with, but he, I mean, he's good people. Oh, uh, he's he, a smart man. He's a smart man, I'll tell you. He absolutely is. Like, he, and he's, he's in all business. He's 24-7 in the business. I mean, if you've got a promo to do, you've got so long to do it. I mean, you know, he's, he's straight up professional, and I mean, I love that about him because he's, he's going to teach a lot of young kids how to yeah. get business done properly yeah yeah some of these promos lately he was telling me that like he didn't you got to work on them just oh god yeah cut, like you got cut some this, guys who cut. absolutely bomb promos and then you have some guys that take some five takes to get it mm -hmm. i mean he calls me the one take man you know because i pretty much get mine down one take and that's it now i've i've had a few times that i've had to go like twice or three times mm -hmm. you know but 
Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, three strikes you're out. Yeah. Yeah, he wants to get rid of the uh, the back back do- uh, what do you call it? The back alley look, you know. Yeah, the back alley trash bag wrestlers. Or the he does the yeah whatever he just wants to the cut clean cut promos you know. Uh, yeah. Not in, not in the back of the building you know. Yeah, of, like he he's trying to be more professional and, you and have like to show be. more great and like do it in front of green screens and yep. high production values and things yes. of that nature instead of going out beside the garbage dumpster where you know yeah you, you see. can't never tell what's going on out back of a wrestling show <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you don't want to know sometimes all right yeah sometimes <laughs> you might walk up on a situation like oh shit don't you we're not doing a promo here no, we're just smoking a couple of, uh, hold on, we'll be back in a few minutes. Uh. Yeah, we'll be back or something, you know. I mean, he's, which he's cutting a lot of that stuff out, like he really is. Like, he's he's took the promo biz, he took the promo game and the mm-hmm. wrestling business itself at that company up several notches. That's awesome. I'm glad, you know. It's going to be a company that people are not wanting to miss, you know. I really want to oh, be up, yeah. I can't wait to have him, like, there and see him for myself, you know. It's oh, gonna, my God, I can like I said, I mean, you know, of course, I've still got fans, but then there's some of those fans who just absolutely despise me because of some of the ways that I go about doing business, but I do business on my terms. Yeah. And, I mean, the company itself is, is blowing up, and people really don't want to miss what 2019 has to offer from KZW because, I mean, it, it's going big. It is. I mean, it, it is. is. It is. Roku. Roku deal. That's awesome. I'm glad. You know? Oh, God, yeah. Like, I, I mean, of course, you know, you hear different things in the locker room. Like, you know how those things kind of go. Like, mm-hmm. I'm more of the I believe it when I see it type of guy. But yes. I mean, I have all the faith in the world that J.J.'s got everything in the works. J.J.'s the gold of the mind, you know? Come on. Oh, yeah. He, he's the, mm-hmm. as, as the former owner called him when he sold the company to him, he's the golden goose that's going to be laying the golden eggs. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, you may have to him him up because he'll be laying all these golden eggs and you'll never well, get Well, was the other promoter, like, really, not really there for it a lot, you know? Yeah. Yeah, some of those. Well, I mean, yeah. a, a, a company. I know. Uh, especially a wrestling company. I mean, you, you don't, I mean, you, you can't just walk off from it or just half-ass it. And I mean, you can't be a promoter and a wrestler, too. So, I mean. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, JJ's one of the guys, he, he coddles it because wrestling's had such a meaningful and long relationship in his life. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he takes care of us. I mean, I I can't say nothing bad about him. I mean, he, he's been one of the best bosses I've ever had. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad I'm working with you guys, you know, with him and you. I can't wait to, like, hang out eventually, you know? We're friends. It's great. Oh, man, it's going to be it's a good friendship. I love this whole it's a fr- getting on these podcasts and telling it, our sides of it and stuff. The friendships, like you know what? You get to, you get a friendship out of the deal out of after, and it's awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, because I mean, you get exposure, you make new friends. I mean, some of these people, like you, you know, mm-hmm. like you have people out in the world every day who look at people and judge people every day. Mm-hmm. But some of my closest friends are some of the craziest looking people you'd ever see. You know? Right. But, right. Like, I love them. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like my friends, you know, they're wrestler friends, and, you know, I just move on, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, when that bell rings and it's time to do business, I mean, I'm all about doing business, and, I mean, I, I like I said, I just, I don't fight to lose. Like, I, I've just never been one of those guys who who just accepts, you know, a loss or who just accepts, you know, laying down. Like, I just, I, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm the type of guy, like, I, I want my career to be, as long as as the good Lord, you know, sees fit to let me work, and I'll let me, be let, like that guy. Let me ask you this, Jeremy. Um, if you were to look back on your career and pick one moment in time that was pretty good for you, what would it be? Like, <sighs> match-wise. Match-wise. Or hardcore-wise, or just, you know... I, if I was going hardcore wise, I would have to say Cage Fury last year at KZW. Yeah. Because that was one of the bigger events that I had attended. Mm hmm. And that was like the first real, like, first time I'd ever really got, like, hardcore, like, mm-hmm. sick hardcore, you know. But, uh, yeah. like, my favorite match of all time, I would have to say, mm, would probably be. Jeremy Rage versus Crutch, and that's just 
I mean, that's just no lie because of just the technique. Like, we told a hell of a story. Chemistry. Was, the chemistry. It was just, yeah, the chemistry was there. Every, every, the, the stars aligned properly that night. Everything, yeah. we was just hitting everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Hey, that was like a cool question, huh? Like that? I just a moment in time. I'm just like, you know, just jump into something random. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's anything. Like, you can, that's anything it. you want to go with, brother. I'm, like that's, I said, I'm yours. Ever how long you want me, I'm here. Yeah. But let's see. Uh, yeah, so we said concussions. We talked about concussions. We, uh, you know. But, no, there's pretty much, uh, let's, uh, so we covered what we want to cover. Tonight, I oh, think. Yeah? So stay tuned, fans. More to right. come. More to come, but... Stay, stay, just keep your eyes peeled for KZW, because, I mean, Mr. Wrestling himself is at KZW. I've signed the full-time deal, like I'm there. Um, yeah. I have a three-year deal going with him as of right now, and, you know, KZW <laughs> in the 2019 is going to be doing some big things, so just keep your eyes peeled and be on the lookout. Hey, any last words for... For Chris, for Chris, the Chris, the Chris might as well, right? Hey, yeah, the Chris Rose might as well. He, uh, you know, he, he or anybody, before, anybody, but, anybody know, taking you that wants to take you on, right? Yeah, anybody, the Chris Rose doesn't matter who they are. If mm-hmm. they want to step in the ring with Mister Wrestling Jeremy Rage, they call me Mister Wrestling for a reason. And if you have a championship and you are at that company or you're at any company. Feel free to jot your ass on down to KZW and take Mr. Wrestling on. I mean, I'm always willing. I'm always ready. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it to the table. <laughs> bring it to the ring. Yeah, let's do business here, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, f- well, fans, where can people reach you, Mr. Mr. Wrestling Jeremy Rage from Kentucky Zone Wrestling? I guess on Facebook, right? Absolutely, Facebook or Instagram. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And that's a wrap, right? KT, KZW all the way, baby. <laughs> all the way, brother. All the way. Hey, have a good night, all right? I appreciate you, sir. No problem. Have a good night. You too. Man, that was a great conversation today. I, I love talking to... Oh, that was a good one. One of the pr- people you need to check out, fans. He's a wrestler from K- Kentucky Zone Wrestling. Mr. Wrestling, Jeremy Rage. He's a uh, you know, 16-year vet in the business, and uh, you know he ha- he still got fire in the tank. <laughs> and uh, you know he's just looking to uh, you know wrestle and just keep on going and go hardcore and just take it to the next step. And you know that's what you do in the wrestling game. Just keep on going. Live day by day. Take opponent by opponent. Thank you for listening, fans. And tune in tomorrow night to my podcast. I will be on Facebook Live with my guest, Scenic Nick, the manager. And we're going to be talking to him and see what's going on. And much, much more. Thank you for listening. And have a good night. Hey, wrestling fans, I want to mention Collar and Elbow. Collar and Elbow was founded on traditional values of professional wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product intended to connect with people on an emotional level. A symbolic relationship where one cannot flourish without the other. We strive to create a product that embodies our passion for professional wrestling expressed through street fashion. Visit CollarAndElbowBrand.com and use the promo code DeathMatchRussellPodcast and save 10% off when you make a purchase. Collar and Elbow. Where wrestling passion meets street fashion. You, you can find more Deathmatch Russell podcasts on the following social media DeathmatchRussell.com. Follow on Twitter at DavidNJ32 and on Facebook, Facebook.com slash DJDaveNJ32. Find me on Podcast City Network at PodcastCity.net, Facebook.com slash Podcast City Network. Hit the like button and share. And on Twitter at PodcastCityNet. You can hear Deathmatch Russell podcast on Stitcher Radio and on iTunes.